Hey, what's up, LC students? Hey, so thankful you are joining us for worship tonight. Um, tonight's actually, it's actually pretty exciting, okay? So we're continuing in our James series, um, but we've decided to take things a little bit more chill for the couple of weeks that we have remaining in this series, like just just a little bit more low key because we realize that like one, James is like that, the, like the very book of James is like that. It's very practical, it's very everyday life. And so we were like, man, why don't we just start um, portraying this like just an everyday, like, hey, let's have a conversation, let's talk, let's open up God's word together. So tonight we're gonna be uh, in James chapter three, uh, starting in, in, we're going to be in there tonight, and so, uh, but it's just going to be like this. Uh, just I'm recording on my phone. Jetty's recording worship on his phone, uh, and it's just going to be a great time together. So we're just going to enjoy this time uh, to to just know that God's word is good and it's for our everyday life. Um, so that's tonight. Uh, I just want to come with you, come at you with a couple of uh, announcements. Okay, very very excited. Okay, so on July 26th, 27th, and 28th, that's a Sunday night, Monday night, and Tuesday night. We are having Revive Nights. Okay, and we are so pumped about this. I know we didn't have to, uh, we didn't get to, ha- uh, to have camp because of COVID, but we are actually going to get to come together in person. Okay, still with social distancing and and masks. Uh, required and asked of, um, but we're actually together. So there's going to be worship, there's going to be food, there's going to be tons of fun, and we're just going to get to open up God's Word together, worship together, okay, uh, and have a great time. So uh, lots of information on that that you can find on our social media, Facebook and Instagram, uh, as well as make sure that you register so you can register in person on the weekend services, Saturday and Sunday here at our downtown campus and our Auburndale campus. And online registration, if it isn't open already, will be open very soon. We'll let you know about that. So register for this so we can know that you're coming. And guys, listen, invite your friends. Please invite your friends. We want you. We want this to be an opportunity that the gospel is presented and people just come together and worship. And so invite your friends. If they go to church somewhere, awesome. If they don't go to church anywhere, awesome. It's going to be a great time for everyone. So uh, lots of cool things coming for that. There's going to be theme nights. Uh, there's going to be after parties, after worship, um, and just really, really cool stuff. And we're also going in to incorporate tribes like we would for camp. So, guys, it's very exciting. Super pumped about this. July 26th, 27th, and 28th from 6 to 8.30 p.m. Uh, love you guys so much. Very excited for tonight. I'm going to pray for us, and then Pastor Jetty is going to lead us in worship. So let's pray. God, we love you. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you, God, that it is it is good for us for our everyday lives. For every moment of every day, God, 24-7, your word is good. And it leads us and it guides us into righteousness and to obedience and points us to King Jesus so that we can look past the struggles and the trials of this life and look to the hope that he gives us uh, because of the cross. Lord, we pray for tonight. We pray for the word that's preached. We pray for the worship that will be uh, sung, God. We love you, and we pray all this in your precious Son, holy name, King Jesus. Amen. Love you guys. Bye. 
faith I trust what you say You're good Your love is great I'm broken inside I give you my life I may be weak But your spirit's strong in me My flesh may fail My God, you never will I may be weak But your spirit's strong in me My flesh may fail My God, you never will Lord, we love you. God, we worship the fact that even though we're going to mess up, even though we're going to fail, you never will, Lord. You are faithful to the end. God, we pray that you receive the glory through this. God, we love you so much. God, I pray that if there's anyone watching this that hasn't taken that step and given their life to you to be the king of their life, that that would change right now. God, you're worthy of our lives. You're worthy of everything we own, everything we have to offer, which really isn't much compared to what you've given to us, Lord. God, but I pray that we would just surrender our lives to you, all for your glory. I would pray all these things in the precious and holy name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey, how's it going, LC students? Uh, hey, tonight, uh, as we've said, we're just gonna kinda kick it, just chillax a little bit tonight, okay? Uh, uh, past couple weeks since we started this, been super kind of programmed, and, um, and you know, as we kinda thought about this, James is very much a, like, low-key, um, down-to-earth book, and uh, we know that sometimes we just need to be a little less programmed and a little bit just more real and so uh tonight we're just going to be a little real um through worship and through the word so uh it's going to be a good time together tonight and so uh, uh we're going to be talking about james chapter 3 verses 1 through 12 so if you want to go ahead and open up uh there uh we're just going to walk through that a little bit so tonight together just real quick it's even going to be a little bit shorter tonight um but we're going to just uncover and unpack some truths from God's word found in James. So James chapter three, verses one through 12, it says this, not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that, uh, that we who are teachers will be judged with greater strictness. For we all stumble in many ways. And if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, uh, able also to bridle his whole body. If we put bits into the mouths, of horses so that they obey us we guide their whole bodies as well look at the ships also though they are so large and are driven by strong winds they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs so also the tongue is a small member yet it boasts of great things how great a force is set ablaze by such a small fire and the tongue is a fire a world of unrighteousness the tongue is set among our members staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so does a spring pour forth uh, from the same opening both fresh and salt water can a fig tree my brothers bear olives or a grapevine produce figs neither can a salt pond yield fresh water all right so there's some hefty words in here speaking about words speaking about the tongue 
Uh, and so we're just going to walk through this a little bit. And I think that James, starting off this part of his letter to the churches in, that are scattered all over, right? Um, I think a lot of it has to do with pride because he's talking about teaching. And, and sometimes, especially during this time, people wanted to become teachers because there's a, there a level of authority and respect that you could get if you were a teacher. Um, and so he's saying, ultimately, straight off out of the bat right here, hey guys, listen, not many of you should be teachers. Not many of you should, should desire this pride in your hearts because if that's the case, you're going to be judged more strictly because teaching God's word specifically and teaching people, that is a high responsibility. In fact, it is a calling. Those who are called to teach and preach, it is truly a calling if you do that full time. And so, so James is talking about this. And I think from, for us tonight, we need to just say, hey, do my words pour forth pridefulness? Um, and I think if we begin to think of it that way, kind of get, get our words on the front end saying, man, am I just being prideful? Uh, am I being arrogant? Am I seeking myself in what I say? Uh, it can save a lot of heartache from us. So just a couple of truths that I want to walk through uh, with this and you guys tonight that I know has been very um, profound in, in, my, in my life. Uh, so three things, right? Three things we're going to talk through tonight is, is number one is I, you and I, we must realize the power that is at hand when it comes to our, our mouths, the words we speak, the things we say. Um, you know, Paul, or I'm sorry, James right here gives a lot of illustrations about um, little things that have a lot of power, right? He talks about a bit in a mouth's horse, right? I don't know if you've ever ridden a horse, but you have the bit and bridle in, in the horse's mouth. And with that, the, the rider can direct that massive beast anywhere it wants to go, right? Uh, talks about a ship. Okay, uh, there's a small rudder at the, at the back of the ship, right? And the pilot directs that rudder and it moves the entire ship. Like, I don't know if you've ever been on a cruise, right? But those, those are massive, massive vessels that are super fun too, right? Um, and, but like just a small rudder drives that massive ship in that in the ocean right and that's kind of crazy and it talks about a forest fire right how forest fire is set ablaze by even just the smallest of a spark uh you know we've we've talked about uh wildfires in california and things like that and those those start from a very small spark and then it just devastates acres and acres and acres of 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 woodlands right and and endangers people and so very small things. And I think for us today, like, okay, yeah, those make sense to us. But I think, so I've been watching like DC, um, DC uh, characters on the CW, right? And uh, so we're going through that, Shayla and I. And um, a lot of times there's like, usually like this little button and it detonates a nuclear warhead and stuff like that. And uh, it's a very small button, okay? But it controls something that can literally destroy the earth right now that's fictional but i'm sure like something somewhere there's probably something like that right just a small button that can fire off missiles to take out entire countries continents and potentially like i don't know maybe the world who, who knows but very small things have a very big power all right. And so for you and I tonight, we have to realize the power that is at hand that we have, right? To use our tongue. All right. And that's what James is talking about here. Tongue, one of the smallest muscles uh, in our, in our, for our body, right? One of the smallest members of our body. But man, it has so, so much power. And, and so the, the second thing I want to talk about tonight is that you and I must realize uh, not only the power that is at hand, but the pain that can occur from that power. Um, I know for myself, uh, as a young kid, elementary school, middle school, um, I struggled with, with body image, uh, with the way I looked and things like that. And not only did that come from my own, my own mind, right? But people around me weren't much help either, right? They would say things that were really, really painful. And I don't have a great memory, but what I can remember are those painful things that people said to me about the way I looked. And I'm sure you can, can think back and some of those very small words 
can make such a huge impact. And we all know that saying, sticks and stones can break my bones, but words can never hurt me. That's a load of lies, okay? Words hurt so bad. And there is so much pain that can come from just a few words in our lives. And so for you and I, we can spat off something so quick and it can hold so much pain for another person, right? So much pain can occur. And so this is what James talks about here, right? We, with our same breath, okay, with our same tongue, um, we come into church, and, and I'm sure this is probably a very specific thing that he's saying right here. You come to church, you praise God, and you lift up words to him. He says this uh, in, in verse... Um, uh, verse, verse, uh, let me find it right here. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. Oh, verse nine. Okay. Yeah. Verse nine. Okay. He says with, uh, with it, we bless our Lord and father. Right. And so coming to church and you'll see him praise this and man, amen. Yeah, absolutely. But then we leave, we go home with our brother and sister, our, our parents, um, other people, we, we say negative things, hurtful things on our, on Snapchat or, uh, Instagram or texting. We text people just negative, hateful, toxic words. And, and so we can bless God on one hand and one side of our mouth and we curse people and are, are, are arrogant and mean and put ourselves first and say hateful things on the other side of our mouth. Like he said, guys, that should not be. And so there's power, right? There's power. Uh, we need to realize that. There's pain. And we also need to realize that. But, but I think when we understand the power of our words, of our mouths, and the pain that it can cause, and we as believers and followers of Jesus Christ, understanding that that's not how it should be, as James says, the third thing is that I want to leave us with tonight is that we and I, you and I must realize that, yes, there's power at hand. There's pain that can occur. But what we ultimately want to realize is that the praise that we want to bring. All right. Uh, James says, listen, does a fig tree produce olives? No. Does a salt or does a freshwater pond produce salt water? No, absolutely not. So he's saying this, guys. How can you be a follower, a disciple of Jesus Christ, to say you love God, but yet go home and act with pride and anger and bitterness to your brother or sister or your parents or text a hateful, bitter, bitter text to somebody or cyber bully somebody on, on social media or just pick, you know, just pick at somebody with your words. It doesn't have to be spoken words, right? Like, like James then didn't have Snapchat or text, right? But we do, and we choose to use those means in, in, in a way that we decide, right? And as followers of Jesus Christ, our text, right, should be texts of encouragement and love. They should never be texts of anger or, or hurt. That's what James is saying here. It should never be that way. So ultimately... If your life, your text messages is like a fresh water pond, it should produce fresh, refreshing water, not salt water. That bitterness, right? And so I want us to walk away tonight realizing that there is power. We have so much power with our, our, our mouths, our, our fingers, if we're texting, um, and, and just really communication, right? What we say to people. There's so much power in that. And we have to realize that there's so much pain that we could cause towards other people. But because of that power, we can also bring so much praise. We can praise, bring praise to our God, our, our God, our Father in heaven, to Jesus Christ, because of the way that we use the way that we communicate to glorify him, to make his name known, to encourage brothers and sisters in Christ, to encourage people who, who don't know Jesus, uh, and to share the truth with them. So, so guys, I just want us to walk away. Uh, my prayer has been this, that, that I just want to live, I want to think, I want to speak the way that I have been created. Because you and I, guys, we are a new creation in Christ. Uh, and with as a new creation, in Christ, my tongue is also a new creation. My, my, my desire to speak and text to people is a new creation. So I pray that it's used in righteousness because I am a new creation. So, so you tonight, if you have committed and you said, Jesus, 
I am yours. If you are saved by Jesus Christ, know that your words, the way they communicate, you communicate, is to bring praise to God, right? To encourage that person. That brings praise to God. To, to speak truth and love to that person, that brings praise to God. To not speak in anger or arrogance or pride, that brings praise to God. So, are your words, the way you communicate, are they reflecting you as a new creation? Because if not, you have to change that. But maybe tonight you also realize, you know what? I speak this way, I think this way, I communicate this way because I'm not a new creation. I am not a new creation in Christ. I have never given my life to King Jesus to make him Lord of my life. And so tonight I encourage you to do that. Maybe you've just been in the season of, of pride and anger and bitterness. And you are a new creation in Christ, but you have been living in a season of, of communication that is not reflect, a reflection of who you are in Jesus. Tonight change that. Tonight commit just to commit to your to yourself and to Jesus Christ that you were going to change, that you were going to to make sure that your words, your texts, your snaps are a reflection of who you are in King Jesus. Guys, I love you. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us tonight. I pray that this was encouraging. I know for me this was encouraging uh, to just know that we have so much power at hand, that we can bring so much pain to the lives of people with the way that we communicate, but we ultimately just want to bring so much praise to our God and to our, our, our Savior, Jesus Christ, in the way that we communicate to other people every second of every day and to live, to love, and to lead well because of who we are in Jesus Christ. I love you guys. Uh, I'm going to pray for us and we'll end. God, we love you. Thank you so much for this time together. Lord, just to, to communicate, to hang out, to spend some time together, more relaxed, God. Um, and I pray that it just, this is just real, God, that this tonight this message would be real in the lives of our students and myself and our leaders, God, that we would understand that there is, there is power in the way we communicate to people. There is, there is pain, God, that is so easily um, um, created as we speak and communicate. But God, when we realize the power that's at hand, we just want to bring you praise. We want to bring you praise because we are a new creation in Christ. So I pray that tonight we would, we would reflect in this, that we would know this, and that our words would be just a sweet offering uh, as we speak them to other people. They'd be a sweet offering to you, our God. We love you and we pray all this in your name, King Jesus. Amen. Love you guys.